In the United States, we medicate children and adolescents' behavioral problems more than any other country. Children in child welfare and correction settings have even higher rates of psychiatric drug use. The overarching concerns are about using too many drugs too often with children that are too young. This module reviews the scope of psychotropic drug use among children and orients you to some key concepts and terminology. In this course, psychotropic, psychoactive, or psychiatric drugs refer to legal prescribed medications that alter thinking, feeling, and behavior. In the United States today, about 1 in 6 adults and 1 in 16 children receive at least one prescription for a psychiatric drug. Proportionally, twice as many white children than black or Latino children take such medications. Children in child welfare settings and especially children in foster care, are much more likely to be medicated with the full range of psychiatric drugs. Most psychiatric drugs prescribed to children in poverty are paid for by public funds. From a public health perspective, the high rate of use of psychotropic drugs among youth raises several important concerns. Here are five prominent ones. Prescribed drug use can be either FDA approved or off-label. Drugs come on the market with a specific FDA indication. That's the disease or condition that the FDA approves it for prescription. However, a physician can prescribe a drug for any reason, in which case this is off-label drug use. Off-label use means that insufficient study and review has been conducted on the use of that drug for that particular indication. The problem with polypharmacy is that with more drugs comes more harms. For the reasons listed here, any child on more than one drug should be closely monitored. Adverse effects and toxicity from psychiatric drugs are the biggest concern. Adverse effects are not merely side effects. They are the most common and predictable effects of psychiatric drugs. For instance, sedation on antipsychotics is the most frequently observed and reported effect of these drugs. Examples of behavioral toxicity range from daytime sleepiness to movement disorders to psychosis and potentially life-threatening events such as serotonin syndrome. Behavioral toxicity is officially recognized in all FDA labels. Psychiatric drugs work by altering normal brain function. The long-term consequences on the developing brains of children are unknown. The prescribing cascade describes the common occurrence of polypharmacy and complex drug regimens for youth. It includes the failure to recognize drugs' adverse effects as exactly that, and instead to interpret them as symptoms of mental illness. 
We know that behavioral adverse effects, such as apathy, agitation, even psychosis, can occur in up to a third of young people taking a stimulant or antidepressant, for example. However, when those effects appear, they're often mistaken for a mental disorder that requires more drugs. In your caseload, how often do your kids, once medicated, progress from ADHD and stimulant to bipolar and antipsychotics? We can't emphasize enough how serious and underrecognized this problem is. Most child welfare settings, however, provide little oversight to monitor and reverse the prescribing cascade, in effect, to deprescribe. Legislatures in many states are beginning to look very closely at the issue of the psychi psychiatric medication of children in child welfare systems and especially in foster care. It's recognized by now after almost 15 to 20 years of advocacy and consciousness raising by scholars, by researchers, by professionals, social workers and others, that we are medicating very vulnerable children with no truly sound reason. We have little oversight of the practices. All of this is suggesting that there is a paradigm shift that's going on and that social workers have to take this issue very seriously. This course aims to provide some guidelines, to lay some foundations to begin to look at this issue earnestly. We show in the module that usage of all psychiatric drugs has skyrocketed in all groups and settings. Debate persists, however, on the wisdom of medicating so many children in order to change the mood and behavior. Shannon, what are some of the supporters' arguments for this practice? Supporters would claim that behavioral problems of youth are brain disorders that require medical treatment. Um, and also some suggest that diagnosing behaviors in this way removes blame from parents and families. And third, you have the fact that for many children, stimulants do effectively alter or treat ADHD-like behaviors. So kids who can't sit still in class will be able to sit still after taking one of these drugs. And Jeff, what do the critics reply to these arguments? Yeah, David, I think critics would remind us that not one biomarker has been found for any childhood mental disorder. And that is that no one has found any biological dysfunction or abnormality in the brains of youth diagnosed with ADHD or any other mental illness. Critics also caution us that the use of medications in youth has far outpaced the research evidence. Uh, third, pediatric adverse effects are largely unknown, unrecognized, and unpredictable, especially over the long term. In fact, critics argue that medicating a developing brain uh, will lead to problems in long-term functioning. 
Thank you both. Despite the prevalence of medicating children, the jury is still out on the long-term helpfulness of this practice.